Hello, welcome back to my channel. We are continuing advanced calculus with vectors. We are going to be explaining what vectors are, position vectors, quality of vectors, in fact, going all the way into vectors. So let's go. What is a vector? A vector is a quantity that has magnitude and direction. Magnitude is like um, size and direction is like an arrow showing where it is. So consider this vector A, then minus A will be this vector. The same magnitude but a different direction. I the direction. So this is minus A. So the position vector is if we have a vector and this point is A, this point is B. This position vector A B is where A is the point X naught Y naught and B is the point X Y. Then the position vector is X minus X naught. So it's like B minus A. So X minus X naught comma Y minus Y naught. Vector addition. So I'm going to also take subtraction here. I have this vector. And we are looking for this. Okay, we always look at your arrow. Suppose this is u and this is v. Let this be u and this is v. Then this place is. See where we are starting from. We are starting from this place. And we are going upwards. Okay? So from this place, we go this way. But this and this is like this. So if I go this other way, I have minus v, right? Yeah. And I go this way, I still have v. So this, let's say this is w. W is equal to v minus u. The arrow is pointing up, right? Yes. So why is it v minus If it's pointing up, we are going from here. So W is the sum of. What is it? I'm supposed to go like this. This way. So that's why we have minus V here. Because this is it. Going this other way is minus V. Are you seeing it? For this place, we are starting from here. We are going this way. We have U remaining the same. And we are going up here. So this W here, let's call it W star. W star is equal to v, u plus v. Understand? So if this, if we have the same thing, but we have it this way, then the, the, this vector is, then this vector w, let's say one, is from here. We are going this way. So minus v plus u. So u minus v is w one. As simple as that. So that's what addition of vector is. You need to consider the direction of each vector and the arrow that the arrow where the arrow of what you are looking for is facing. So you can know where to start and where to stop. What's your question? Are they not going the same distance? Okay. So this one is going downward, right? Mm -hmm. So we are starting from here. Okay. If I start from here, I'm supposed to go like this. And come and meet me this. Okay. So if I go like this, it's opposite of what it is. That's why I have minus v. But it's exactly in the same direction with you. So that's why I have you. So I have W1 is equal to U minus V. Two vectors A and B. They are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction. But not necessarily the same position. For example, if this is the plane, and I have, this is 1, okay? And I have this vector of unit 1, okay? And I call this B1. And I have the same, another vector, rather, from here to here, which is still of the same unit 1. You see that this vector has the same direction with this vector, and the same magnitude, but they are not on the same position. So you see that this B2, 
and this V1 are equal. They are equal. Yes. Two vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and direction. Okay. Suppose that this one now was facing this way. They are not equal again, please. Different direction. Because the directions are different. Mm -hmm. And if I have another vector here that is something like this, it has the same direction as this, mm -hmm. but has a different magnitude, so it's not equal. So let's consider the magnitude of a vector. The magnitude of a vector is denoted by this, given the vector v. And suppose that v is equal to ai plus bj. That's how vectors are usually represented. Then the magnitude of this vector is square root of a squared plus b squared. Now observe if I have the vector v over the magnitude of v. If I multiply it with the magnitude of v, then I have v, v. right? Yes. So every vector can be expressed as a product of this is the magnitude and this is the direction. So every vector can be represented as its product as a product of its magnitude and its direction. That's it. So, an important question now is saying, what if we have V is equal to AI plus BJ plus CK? What is the magnitude? The magnitude is still in the same way. Square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Suppose we are giving V to be equal to 3I plus 2 J plus one K. Find the magnitude of that and express that vector as a product of its magnitude and its direction. So the magnitude, first of all, is square root of squared squared squared. So three squared plus two squared plus one squared. Three squared is nine. 2 squared is 4, right? Plus 1, root 4, right? So the direction, the direction, which is V over magnitude of V, is equal to 1 over root 14 times 3i plus 2j plus k. And this means that what V is equal to 1 over root 14 times 3i plus 2j plus k times root 14. Where well, this is the direction times its magnitude. That's clear, right? Yes. Consider the slope, the target, and the normal of the vector. Let's be given generally a vector v is equal to ai plus bj. If we are given this vector, the slope of this vector is v over a, where a is not zero. If a is zero, then the slope is not defined. So if this i coordinate vanishes, then the slope is undefined. For tangent, if I have a curve, if I want to get the tangent about this point, it's going to be a straight line that hits this curve. Yeah. In fact, any straight line that is parallel to this is also a tangent of this. It's also a tangent of this curve at that point. It doesn't have to touch the curve for it to be a tangent. So what do you think the slope of this curve would be? It's still very well. Now if you have normal, the normal to this curve is a straight line that is perpendicular to the tangent. 
passing through that point. The slope of the normal is minus 1 over the slope of the tangent, that's 1 over p over n. Is that clear? So let's now take example. We're going to get the slope of the vector v is equal to 3i minus j. How do you have the slope today? 3 over minus 1. Minus 1. It's not in minus 1 over. Minus 1 over. So minus. Because this is b over a. So I'm taking time to write down the formulas here. Let's take this example. Given this curve, we're going to get the unit tangent and the unit normal. First of all, the unit tangent of a vector is the vector over its value. So this is the unit vector. Okay? So first of all, we're going to get the tangent, then we get the normal. To get the tangent, we first get the slope. The slope of the slope is exactly the standard slope. Okay, so we have differentiating y with respect to x. We have 3x squared over 2, right? Mm. Zero. So if you take it as 1, 1, okay. you have this as 1, 1, 3 over 2. But this is b over a. Right? So this means that the vector is 2i plus 3j. And this is the tangent vector. But it's not the unit tangent vector. Mm -hmm. So how do we get the unit tangent vector? We get the magnitude of v, which is equal to 2 squared plus 3 squared square root square root of 13, 4 plus 9, 13, square root of 13. So, the unit tangent is equal to 1 over root 13 times 2i plus 3j. So, this is the unit tangent. Now, if the tangent is this and b over a is this, then the slope of the normal it will give me minus 1 over b over a, right? So this will be minus 1 all over 3 over 2. So this is minus 2 over 3. So I can call this, this is still b over a, be careful. So I can call this u is equal to 3i minus 2j. And that person can say, oh, let me call the minus 3i plus 2j. They are both correct, okay? Mm -hmm. One is the reflection of the other. So let's work with this. The magnitude of this vector is still the same magnitude of this vector, is not? Which is square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. If you want, you can put the minus mm -hmm. and square it. Square it, then you have square root of 13. Therefore, the normal vector, unit normal, which is u over normal v is equal to 1 over root 13. 3i minus 2. So this is the unit target and that's the unit normal. As simple as that. Okay, so now we move to dot product and cross product. What is dot product? If you have two vectors, A and B, suppose that A is A1i plus A2j plus A3k and B is B1i plus B2j plus B3k. This, by definition, is magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cos 
theta. For where theta is the angle between A and B. So if I have A dot A, it's going to give me magnitude of A times magnitude of A. But the angle between A and A is zero. Zero, so it's one. Because zero is one. So this is actually magnitude of A squared. Generally, A dot B is equals to A one B one plus A two B two plus A three B three. A dot A is equals to A one squared plus A two squared plus a three squared. And this is the same thing as well. A squared. You know that the magnitude of A is actually the square root of A one squared plus A two squared plus A three squared. So it's easy to say by square if I have this squared. Magnitude of A squared. Okay. Magnitude of A squared. If we have A to be equal to A one I plus A two J plus a three k and we have b to be equal to b one i plus b two j plus b three k then observe first of all a question that comes to mind is what is i cross j a way not to forget or mix it up let's consider what happens when we cross the vectors I, J, or K, I, J, K. Depends. I cross J, or J cross I, or K cross J. What happens? Just write I, J, K, and write I again. Then you have I cross J is equal to K. J cross K is equal to I. K cross i is equal to g. minus j. Okay. So Once you hit, hit this end, okay. it starts becoming minus. Okay. Then, we have done I, uh, k cross i gave us minus j. Now, k cross j, going backward now, k cross j gives yes. us minus i. Okay. You understand? So if it's not I cross J, and it's not J cross K, and it's not K cross I, any other thing, any other arrangement will be minus. That's J cross I will be minus K, while this is K. This will be I, while K cross J will be minus I. And then this will be J, while I, I cross K is equal to minus J. This is very important in computing yes. cross product. So let's do the cross product of A and B. It is simply the determinant of the matrix I, J, K. I'm doing A cross B, so the matrix A, I'm going to put here. I have A3, considering the coefficients of the matrices. Yes. Then I have B1. B2, B3. I will keep I somewhere. And I do A2 times B3. A2, B3. Minus B2. Minus B2. A3, B2. A3, B2. This is simply the standard of the matrix. If you are not following, I will keep the link in the description box for the standard of the matrix. Okay? So this is plus, minus, plus. We have minus J, so keep J one side. So you're going to close this row, this column, and this row. And you're left with this times this, and minus this times this. A1, B3, minus A3, B1. Plus something K. So we are closing this or we are closing this, we are left with this time, this A minus B. this time, this A1, A1 B2 minus A2, A2 B1. B1. And that's our answer for the first one.
So we're going to find the dot product and the cross product of these two vectors and these two vectors. If you want, you can pause the video and try them yourself. It's very easy. I have kept the formulas for cross product and dot product for you to try. You can also try getting the dot product of A with itself and B with itself for each of the numbers. A dot B for number one is equal to Observe that um, I is zero, yes, right? Yes, so you have yes, two yes. times zero plus minus three times six plus five times minus one. And this will give me zero minus eighteen minus five, right? Yes. Minus twenty three. So for the cross product A cross B, you can choose to draw the matrix by having I, B, K off and then fixing the coefficients of each of these. But I already have the formula here, so I'm going to substitute. Okay? So we'll just label so we we'll just label it first so that it's easy. We have A1, A2 is minus 3, A3. A1 here is 0. A2 is 6, A3 is minus 1. So we're going to substitute. We have Zero. A2, B3. A2 three. is minus, minus three. 3. Sorry, this is B. I'm sleeping <laughs> This is B1, B2, B3. Minus 1. Times minus 1. Minus. I a3 is 5 times B2 is 6. I, right? Minus A1. B3. Minus 1. Minus A3. 5. Minus um, B1. 0. Plus. A1, 2, two. B2, two. 6, minus, minus three. A2, minus 3, B1, zero. Zero. K. So we're not going to do this. We have 3 times, minus 3 times minus 1 is 3. 3, minus 5 times 6. Minus 13. So we have minus 27. So this is minus 27 i. Right? Then the next one, minus minus 2 minus 0. Plus 2 j. Plus 2 times 6. 12. 12. Minus 0. Okay. So that's the answer. If you observe, the dot product gives us a scalar. Well, the cross product gives us a vector. So if you've made a mistake, you may know. If you are crossing and you're getting a scalar, then you are wrong. If you are dotting and you're getting a vector, then you are wrong. Let's do the second one. For number two, A dot B is equal to 5 times 2, 10, plus minus 1 times minus 5, 5, five plus two. 2 times 1, 2. This is 7, 10. For the second part, A cross B, we have A2, B3. What does that give me? Minus 1. A1, A2, A3. B1, B2. B3. So, A2, just for the moment, A2, minus B, one. minus 1, B3. Minus one. Okay. Minus A2, A3, B2. 2 times minus 5. Okay. I minus A1, B3. 5 
times 1. Minus 8 3 1. 2 times 2. Okay. Plus A1 B2. 5 times minus 5. Minus A3. A to B1. Minus 1 times 2. Minus 1 times 2. Okay. So here we have minus 1 plus 10. Minus 1 plus 10. Minus I. Here we have 5 minus 4. 1. Times minus, so we have minus 3. And then finally here we have minus 25 plus 2. Minus 23. Okay. okay. That's all for dot products and cross products in this class. You can try and work design this yourself. Thank you for watching this video. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and see you in the next video. I like your comments in the comment section, and please try my